Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Both joined by Derek Young. And uh, we are here as the offseason rolls on for both football and basketball. Except for football, they, they actually have stuff going on right now. They've got spring practice in the air, even though uh, it does not look or feel like spring in Manhattan. Uh, I mean, it doesn't feel like it in certain parts of the state. But if you're north and especially west, uh, you got not spring weather. You, you're oh. – feeling it right now i woke up to snow and ice this morning yeah uh fortunately we did not get any of that down here but i was not shocked to hear that i guess when you uh said yeah try to start in the car this morning and there's too much ice and snow for me i was not prepared for that I, and i totally get it i also saw i mean there was spots out in western kansas that were like over six inches i think goodland uh had over six inches so um, lincoln like, cure better grab his shovel yeah. and get to work yeah, it's good. The only, that's the only thing I think about now when I hear Goodland, Kansas, is Lincoln Cure. It probably used to be, oh, who was it? Levi Archer, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good. That's a good point. Uh, well, Lincoln Cure, in a roundabout way, we can kind of segue from him to what we're going to talk about today, and it's because this is a you know he, he's he's one of the prime targets for K State in the 2025 recruiting class. Everybody knows that he's a prime target for not just K-State, but for any big-time school in the country. None of those schools will have the benefit, well, some of them might, but none of those schools will get to, to host him on a Friday, that's for sure. And one of those teams is playing a Friday home game, and it just so happens to be one of the teams that seems like they might be the front runner. that's K-State. Uh, the Wildcats now know for certain that they will be playing at home against Arizona on a Friday. This was expected when the schedule came out and it said 913 or 914. When it says that you're going to be pegged for that Friday game, it's the same thing that KU and Illinois dealt with with last year. Yeah, and and to be honest, they're the victims of it being too good of a game because True. that the the networks are going to want a good Thursday or a Friday game and if if ESPN's not going to hold on tight to Kansas State to Arizona at K State in any of their main windows then you're probably going to get you know snatched away there um they're probably just fortunate i guess fortunate's a weird way to, to describe this but but it's all because I think you'd rather it still be a non-conference game than than a conference game. Mm -hmm. um, or later in the year, I think earlier in the year is almost a little bit better too. But I know we're going to debate whether you enjoy Friday games, whether you don't, whether you think it's the right move that you don't. Surprisingly, I will probably fall more so in the middle as a – from my job standpoint, from an excitement standpoint, I actually like it a lot. I have no problem with Thursday or Friday games. I think there's a place for them. And this is a type of game that I think does make sense for a Thursday or Friday night, especially early in the season. And selfishly, because we do have to put in like a large amount of hours and time in on a game day we sometimes get to miss what it feels like to be a fan to watch all of the games. So Friday games almost turn out to be like a bye week for us where we get to enjoy the full yep. Saturday slate. So selfishly, I have no problem with it on that front. At the same time, I understand Kansas State coaches, but I mean, we only had six recruiting weekends to begin with when we typically have seven or eight. Now you're giving us five because we have to play on a Friday night. I think high school coaches and high schools in general probably overreact to this a little bit just because it's only a one week type of thing. But I also understand why they would be annoyed by it. I don't know how tough it is to do, but here's like it's probably I'm making it sound too simple. But obviously, if Manhattan High School, if you're playing at home on that week and apparently they are, uh, you could also play on Saturday morning. I've seen that done in places before too. Well, I just uh, obviously not last year, but the year before, I remember uh, Drew showing up to to the game. I forget who K State was playing, but he was uh, sunburnt as a man could be from watching Avery Johnson and Mays play Topeka on a Saturday. So it it's something that can be done. It can be worked around. 
And yeah, the there there is the selfish side of it that for you and I, for what we do, uh, Friday and Thursdays, like those types of games, it's a lot easier from the standpoint of now you get that full weekend experience. And and that's the same for anybody that you know, goes to to a game in Manhattan that lives, you know, multiple hours away around the state where if K-State's playing a game at 2.30 in the afternoon, the morning window is shot for you and the evening window is shot for you in watching a game. So, 2.30 is rough. Yeah, yeah that's the, the 2.30 ones, yeah, you're, you're just, it's, you're not doing anything that day except focusing on K-State. So from the viewing experience uh, outside of it and some of the benefits that come, I think I understand it and I, I get why it's a good thing. I will enjoy it too because I people like night games. I mean, even if the stigma has kind of gone away now that Fox is into big noon kickoff and everything, night games still feel really important. And that's because there are still so many people that view college football that, you know, go back even 15 years ago, you're playing at night. It's it's a significant game. So I think there's that element to it. And I, you know, I, I think there's just the the TV window that you mentioned earlier, like Fox is looking to expand their presence on Friday night with big time games. They want to put it on big Fox. It's not like you're being buried on FS one. Like, you know, some of the PAC 12 games would be on Fridays. This is an exposure thing. K state and the big 12 and the big 10 is going to have it going on too. Like they are being experimented with and we're going to see how it works out. Um, It's, it's unfortunate for a lot of parties, but there are also a lot of people that benefit from this. And ultimately what it comes down to is how much value are you putting into what K-State would have gotten out of that weekend had they hosted Arizona on a Saturday from a recruiting standpoint. And, you know, you look at it this way too. There's a chance that K-State Arizona game gets penciled in for like an 11 a.m. kickoff. That feels like one that probably would have been 11 a.m. or sometime in the evening on a Saturday. Like if there's a greater chance it ends up at 11, that's already a tough thing to get recruits to anyways, as has been talked about for years. Like guy, those guys are playing football games until 10, 11 o'clock at night. Now they got to find their way to Manhattan, Kansas the next morning. That can be a little bit tricky. So there's a lot to kind of dive into in it. But overall, I'm, I'm okay with it. it. It's just something people have to start to live with and get. We saw K-State last year play on the road at Oklahoma State. There is a greater benefit to the team that is playing at home, obviously. I know that Pac-12 people will say, like, this is one of the things that killed the Pac-12 every year. You had your better team would go on the road on a Friday night, and they're going to lose. Like, it just it felt like how it played out. We saw it happen with K-State at O-State last year. That was easily the worst game K-State played all season uh, was that game in Stillwater. Uh, maybe the snow. Iowa well, State. yeah, the defense, the defense said, uh, I beg to differ. Uh they they tried in in the game against Iowa State. It feels so, like every show we do, we bring up that game in some shape or fashion. That uh, that's going to be one that just is never out of sight. I feel. I think like. it, I think it just is to remind people of how just putrid and maddening that uh that oh, game it was, was. Gross. Oh, it was gross. But, but uh, yes, I, I think this. I think this this Friday thing, like it's going to continue. And I like what you said earlier as well. K State. I think there's benefit to doing it as a non-conference game this year as well, where yes, it would suck to lose it and you don't want to, you want to get a big win against a a good Arizona team coming in. But if you do, it's not impacting you the way that the game at Oklahoma state did last year, which ultimately uh, was kind of the the differentiator between K state having a chance in that game against Iowa state to make it to a big 12 title game and not because if, you know, K state, has the extra incentive there of playing to, to go to another Big 12 title game, maybe the defense isn't uh, shoving guys to give them a boost to the end zone. Yeah, and you mentioned, like, night games do kind of have a sense of importance. So you, you do lock yourself into a night game. The year they won the Big 12, uh, we basically had a 3 a.m. curfew that year covering the team, right? Uh, two years ago, you were obviously still at email online, and we were still, and I was still at KSO, of course. But, like, didn't they have like seven night games in a row? It felt like they heard that one. It one. was it was constant with uh, the night games. Like you just got used to it, which is, I guess, a good little switch up because for years people were like, "Oh, these eleven a.m. games, they just won't stop." But yeah, and they still kept putting OU at eleven, and their fans were just like, "Yeah, no, 
pissed about that. Yeah, no, Still mad. mad. <laughs> yeah. And and I think you probably do get a better television slot and television window in general uh, by putting this game on a Friday uh, because this game deserves kind of a spotlight. This, these are two really, really good teams. And, and I don't know if it gets put on a night on a Saturday. Obviously, it depends on what other games are being played, but you kind of cringe because – Maybe I don't know if it gets the Fox treatment, right? Or the ESPN treatment. It might get FS1. It might get ESPN2. If it's yeah. at 11 a.m., it's probably ESPN or ESPN2 right after college game day, I guess. But I just think this is probably the best case scenario because I, I think like ESPN and, and whoever probably don't give it the, the respect it deserves if it's sharing Saturday with all these other – uh, yeah. games and teams because I, I say this and, and i know it's annoying but i'm and, and i know big Ten's going to other days as well but man you, you have almost a better chance if you get to friday or thursday of viewership just because you're whether it's fair or not whether it's correct or not you're probably going to run second fiddle to a big 10 or sec game even if it's two average teams yeah so that's well, just it is and t- in Put it this way: You might some of these conferences at some point they keep growing. They're going to have no other choice but to play on Thursday or Friday because there's just not enough windows on a Saturday to cover all of them. That's that that's that's kind of the thing here too, where this is going to become commonplace. This is why the Big Twelve last year, yeah, broke your mark could say, "Hey, we're trying to expand and everything." This is also just kind of out of necessity, where if you want your games to be shown on TV because of the way that the TV partnerships are going to work, you're going to have some limited spaces. For reference, here's what K-State Arizona would have been going up against uh, in week three of the season fighting for TV. Alabama-Wisconsin is that weekend. That's going to be Fox's 1A pick. They're going to go 11 a.m. So big noon, the biggest window Fox has is already axed. That's out of the question. You were not getting that if you're K-State Arizona. Because, you know, Alabama is is a moneymaker and Fox – only get so many chances. And then what I would say after that, the next game I see is Texas A&M in Florida. And what you're talking about there is, hey, even yes, the the middle tier of SEC or Big Ten games, they might get preferential treatment and probably will over the Big 12 still. And that's kind of what A&M Florida would be at this point in time. And A&M Florida and ESPN's exclusive deal with the SEC starts next this year, right? Yeah. And, and those games can can go to ABC now as well. So there's another slot there that's – kind of taken up and and, and the gone. Big, and if you're the Big 12, you you are no longer fighting with the Big 10 on mm-hmm. ESPN. You're just fighting with the SEC. But SEC is only on ESPN, so that they're even getting more of that. Um, Big 10 puts on CBS and Fox and NBC. Like, they're a little bit on everything, so – and uh, the there are some some Pac-12 departure games that weekend. Oregon, Oregon State, and Washington, Washington State, uh, both that weekend as well. And then there are a handful of others that you know you, you can look at and say it might just be tough to to get the spot you're looking for. And it's early enough in the season that it's going to feel like a really big deal. People are going to be craving the college football and get that. And and so I think the viewership will be there. I think it'll be a good thing. And I think people will show up in Manhattan. I'm not worried about the in-house crowd because it's a college football game. Most people, if they have the choice, they're picking going to watch K-State over their local high school down the street unless, you know, I'm sorry that you have to miss out on a home game because you have a kid playing. Yeah, that's where you you could run into some trouble. But those tickets are going to be sold for this game still. Like, hey, if you're mad because you don't get to go to this game on Friday night because your kid's playing in Topeka – or in Kansas City or whatever, guess what? You're probably going to make money on your ticket because there's probably going to be a large demand to see two top 20 teams play a night game in Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Yeah, that's the truth. I mean, I, you think about the the amount of people that will want in, and that's the, that's the other benefit to what K-State has going on right now is that there's so much anticipation and excitement that – this isn't like, you know, you're trying to to get people to want to come to games in the last year of Bill Snyder. Like people want those tickets when they're out there. They'll they'll, they'll go and grab them. Might be the preseason Big 12 favorite if like DraftKings, FanDuel and all those like if they're correct. I mean, I think it's Kansas State or Utah, right? Yeah, K-State and Utah are both up there and then obviously we know Arizona coaching change, but they didn't lose as many players as you'd think. Now, 
In terms of the total impact of playing on a Friday and what it'll look like, we just talked a little bit about people will be, you know, some people, will, well, they'll have to choose the high school game because, you know, I understand being a good parent. You, you don't want to just, you know, tell tell Johnny, hey, uh, whatever, you're on your own. We're going to be in Manhattan. Have fun. Just make sure that that phone that you're watching the game on is uh, all charged up before yeah. you get to the high school stadium. So I, I get that from a standpoint, but I'll say this, like, Last year, I went to the KU Illinois game in in Lawrence, and you know, RIP Alec Bussey who went to watch his Illini. They they're not a good football team. Uh, <laughs> Alec Bussey not dead. Illinois not football dead. might be, <laughs> might be. He wants him to be. He's not a Brett Bielma fan. Uh, he admits that he's too hard on him. But I went and I was, you know, I was interested to see what the environment was like because KU has they've started to play a lot of Friday games. They've been playing their season opener on a Friday night at home. And that's the one, like, if K-State was taking their opening game against UT Martin and playing it on a Friday, I'd criticize it a little bit more because that's going to be on ESPN+. Plus. It's pointless to play that game on a Friday. The game against Illinois last year, KU had no decision in that process. Like, the TV networks did that for them. They said, you are playing on a Friday because you're going to be on, I think it was ESPN or ESPN2. Same thing for K-State, Oklahoma State. You have no choice. That's what's going on with K-State, Arizona here. The crowd was actually, I was really impressed by it. It was a good environment. And, you know, I, I'd not ever been in Memorial Stadium there in Lawrence for what I thought was a good crowd uh, because I'd only been there for K State games and one against West Virginia when I was in college. But it was a good crowd. Everybody was energized. And that's Lawrence, Kansas, where they've got two high schools in the city that are going like, you're going to get the crowd. The high school football aspect of all this, I think, is very overrated. And I think there's a lot of pearl clutching that goes on by people that want to act like, you know, football is the end all be all. And, that, you know, we have to we have to carry on the sanctity of high school football. I'm going to say it again and, and people will not like it, but I don't give a lick about high school football as a 25 year old man that doesn't have a kid in high school, doesn't have a family member in high school. And, and I just have no reason to, to care about high school football. So. I don't have an issue with it, and there are a lot more people that don't have that connection to high school football right now. So it's a small group of people that will be impacted by this, and I no doubt feel for them. Like, this sucks for you. And there is a little bit of an element that you can say, hey, Friday should be left for high school football. It's just not the way the world works anymore. I mean, we, we've seen the professional leagues. They've started to cross wires with each other. Now college and pro are crossing wires, and it was only a matter of time before college said, okay, we've gotten big dogged by the NFL and yeah. all these other pro leagues. We're going to big dog the people that have absolutely zero money in the game. Yeah, and the NFL big dogs everyone, right? They big dogged the NBA. It took Christmas. <laughs> yeah, which uh, I don't know if you saw the announcement today. They've big dogged the NBA so much that Christmas is on a Wednesday this year, and they will be playing games on a Wednesday. Uh <laughs> That I mean, if you want to talk about the NBA truly losing their footing in like the sports calendar, their one day has now been taken away and supplanted by the yeah. NFL, and the, the NFL doesn't care. The NFL is the biggest bully in the United States, I think. And the NFL is trying to bully the college football playoff into yep. making them shift around when they play games and everything. And, and they're you know, also good for trying to bully every uh, bully fans and their own teams and the rest of the world too are playing games in Mexico <laughs> city. We're playing games in London. We're playing games in Germany. And I mean, yeah, let's, not, I mean, well, I was going to say at least, you, you know, K state's not being forced to play in Mexico in city. And then uh, that might actually happen uh, considering what Brett, your marks doing to Houston <laughs> and KU next year in basketball. <laughs> yes. uh, maybe I, you're good for now, K-State fans, but you might be shoehorned like the Chiefs were being packed and sent to Germany last year. Uh, Chiefs, remember that game where they were supposed to play in Mexico City with a torn up field? Yeah. yeah that's, it might have been an inside job. They might have sent, uh, what, the, uh, is it Toma, the their old field uh, keeper that tore up the Super Bowl field last year in yeah, Arizona for him? Yeah. Yeah, we're going on a tangent now, but yeah, the you blame don't blame K-State, don't blame college football, blame the NFL. There. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean, wh where should people's emotions and thoughts on this lie? Like I get, you know, if you're you can, if you have college or high school football connections, uh, you have the right to be upset and bothered yeah. by this. 
I just think you have to be understanding that there are a lot more people that are not impacted by this being moved to a Friday at all. And honestly, there will be a, a good chunk of people that I think welcome a Friday home game. One, I think it's going to be fun. I think these types of games, especially the good ones with top 20, top 25 teams going up against each other on a non-Saturday night, actually turn out to be really fun atmospheres and a lot of uh, exciting games as well. I mean, I remember when I got to the beat, the Kansas State beat, everyone talked about, I think it was a Thursday, but the, the crowd that was for that Auburn game in, yeah. what, 2013, 2014? 2014. So everyone still talks about the atmosphere and, and the environment for that game. I know it was a Thursday and not a Friday, but I just think you conjure up some of those scenes by coming up with these types of moments in games on non-Saturday nights. Arizona is going to be really good. It's going to be a lot of fun. So one, I think you need to take that into consideration. Two, if you're affected by this, it does suck, but you got to also realize like there's nothing you can do about it. Um, these things are happening. Um, they're going to continue to happen whether you like it or not. So it's like you can get upset all you want, but you're kind of wasting oxygen doing so even then. And three, I do think it probably is less of a big deal than those affected probably feel like it is because they're in their – little you know yeah. silo and probably think it's a much bigger deal probably isn't i guarantee it's still going to sell out with a great crowd yeah because you if you're in your bubble with, when it comes to high school football you immediately know like 50 other families that are impacted by this decision because there are you know that many other kids on the roster but you expand out of it and you go okay ultimately there are a lot more people that aren't you know in tune or interested in that because I mean, I can I can probably count on my hands the amount of people that I know directly that will be impacted by this and like they wouldn't be able to go because of it. Uh, it's it's not a, a large number. So I do feel for the people impacted by, you know, the Friday night situation and, and football. And I get why you would still feel that attachment, because Fridays have always been high school football for anybody growing up in the state of Kansas or growing up anywhere in the country. You think, OK, Friday is high school. Saturday is college. Sunday is the NFL. but if you want to blame anybody for this, bring it back together. Blame the NFL for breaking the dam open and deciding that they needed to play football on Thursday and Sunday and Monday and sometimes Wednesday. Tuesday and whatever other day they want to do um, because that's what's happening. And college football has always you know, mimicked in some way what's going on at the NFL level. Uh, they have to go and get their slice of the pie too when – it's greater for them, and that's the opportunity that they'll get. And in some ways, you hope that K-State benefits it by it, you know, playing on a bigger stage on Fox and night game on a Friday where people are going to be a little bit starved for, for what's coming. So it's unfortunate uh, in some ways, but I, I look forward to it, and I do think it'll be a pretty awesome environment because I also think an underrated part of games like this, people don't like going to work still. So if you can have an excuse – to get off early on a Friday and say, peace out, I'm going to Manhattan to watch the Cats, I think you're probably going to do it, and you're going to be okay with you know taking some time off for that. Uh, people look forward to it. So I think that there, uh, there will be a big enough crowd there. I don't think it's a worry on attendance, and I think the, the environment will be as good as it can be for what could be a, a preview of the Big 12 title game this year, especially considering these teams won't be giving each other a conference loss. So K-State, Arizona – Set for Friday, week three of the season. K-State will have a pair of games before that, UT Martin and a road game to Tulane. So kind of going to be a wonky start to the season with you know the, the gimme game against an FCS opponent and then the road trip to New Orleans. Then you come back to play on a Friday. Um, here's the good news if you're looking for it. Chris Kleiman has never lost a Friday game in Bill Snyder Family Stadium that he's coached in. He's 1-0 in those games. So he just so happened to be on the other side with North Dakota State when it took place in 2013. So that will do it for Derek Young. I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online. We'll be back throughout the rest of the week with more on the Cats, breaking down every angle from this football team as they are getting closer to exactly five months away from kickoff. Also be sure to head over to kstateonline.com. Be in the know on K-State football and basketball recruiting as the transfer portal is open. So we're out of here, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.